five minutes. Thanks, last and Corla, uh, and I'd like to thank the Bill's Office for its assistance in producing this bill. My bill, the Statute of Limitations, Amendment Bill 2018, will provide that people who suffered as a result of maternal ingestion of thalidomide are not excluded from pursuing their cases because of time limits in the Statute of Limitations Act of 1957. The bill will amend the Statute of Limitations Acts of 1957, 1991 and 2000. I'm inserting into the Acts that a person shall, in respect of injury, suffered uh, by that person as a result of the ingestion of thalidomide by that person's mother during the, the person's gestation period be deemed to be under a disability. The background to this is that the Minister for Health and his department have been trying to technically knock out thalidomide victims uh, and litigants by the, these limits in a case management action at the High Court. New thalidomide victims who emerged since the 1960s, as well as people not acknowledged as survivors back then, remain unacknowledged by the HSE and the Minister for Health. These are people who have never received any entitlements from the Irish state associated with their injuries. I think they should have the right to make their case if they can, and they shouldn't be locked out by a timing and technical issue. The Irish state, through the Irish Thalidomide Medical Assessment Board of the 1960s, failed to acknowledge a lot of people who were injured through the ingestion of thalidomide by their mothers. Fifty years later, sufferers are still, still emerging as there, as there was a degree of cover-up associated with the existence of records. The unfortunate fortunate situation is that my bill is sadly coming too late for two of these litigants who have passed away since the action began four years ago. I hope the Government will now take on board this legislation so those who survive can see their cases proceed. I don't think it is right that they should be stopped from even taking their cases because of the statute of limitations. They deserve the right to pursue their action and even with my proposed change we will still have to prove their cases, which won't be easy given the length of time involved since the 1960s. Thalidomide survivors have been the subject of threats by, by way of court application that their claims will be struck out on timing and for failure to provide medical record detail. The state is being intransigent and difficult with thalidomide survivors, which is, which is shameful given what befell them. Furthermore, this House has been told that the reason the litigation is not resolved is because any payments of compensation would, would come deductible from German or Irish state pension entitlements. This statement is inaccurate in that these litigants have never received a penny of compensation or pension entitlement or any thalidomide related benefit at all from the Irish state. A 2010 state claims agency report on the thalidomide controversy was fundamentally flawed and the state has held on to an entrenched position because of that. That report did not acknowledge that thalidomide remained on the Irish market for several years after the date of, of the knowledge that it posed a risk. Like the cervical cancer cover-up of this century, in the last century these pregnant women who ingested thalidomide were never told that their unborn babies could have been injured in utero. Why Ireland neglected to withdraw and recall thalidomide in a time, timely manner back in the 1960s has never been properly explained. Unlike in the cervical cancer controversy, though, no provision has been, of funding has been delivered by the Minister for Health or his department to the HSE to enable it to provide the necessary medical records to thalidomide litigants. The Minister for Health has a conflict in this matter. On, on the one side, he underfunds the HSE in relation to the provision of medical records, with the consequent effect that thalidomide litigants are placed in a vulnerable position in that their cases could be struck out for failure to provide medical records. And on, on the other side, the Minister for Health is a defendant in the exact same court proceedings, and therefore it is within his remit and his department to cure the issue upon which advantage is being sought in terms of litigation. He and his department need to end a two-faced tactic of sympathising with victims on the one hand and on the other hand blocking their progress. In this action by the thalidomide survivors, in excess of 1,100 court documents have had to be filed so far. Um, 1,539 of the medical records sought by the defendants and the minister from the survivors as well. The hospital system's ability to deliver the records is very, very limited, so the litigants are in a catch-22, last can Corla. And it's important that the medical records are delivered to the litigants, and I'd like to see collective agreement in this House so that this legislation can be progressed. I'd also like to welcome many of the thalidomide survivors uh, who are here in the gallery today and want to see uh, political progress on this. This is something
something that we can do for them to help them in their court action so that, they, uh, that the matter is progressed. So thanks again for the opportunity for introducing the bill uh, and I'd like to see it progress quickly to second stage, to committee and beyond. Thank you.